Welcome to Sustainable Innovation. I am Clara Chen, Founding Managing Partner of the Singapore Deep Tech Alliance. Today, we have with us Mike Lim, Partner at Trirec, a Singapore-based venture capital firm with an investment mandate in decarbonisation. Mike brings with him over 15 years of experience in venture capital and private equity in Asia. Hi Mike, could you briefly introduce yourself to our audience? What inspired your interest in sustainability? Sure, I'm Mike, so I'm a partner at Trirec. So Trirec, we are a Singapore-based uh, VC uh, and we invest specifically into decarbonisation as a team. Yeah, and um, even though we are sitting here, we actually invest globally. Uh, what inspired me? Um, as an individual, I mean, I'm always aware of the whole uh, climate issue that the world is facing. But I always feel kind of constrained as in what an individual like me can actually do to, to have an impact on that. So when I was given a chance to actually join Chorak, I actually jumped at it because it opened up the world of uh, climate tech investment. All right, um, and that actually allows me to um, uh, deploy whatever experience and skills, investment skills that I have in the past uh, by working alongside entrepreneurs that is trying to deploy the latest technology to solve this very complex issue. Um, to be honest, um, the more I'm involved in the space, the more I'm actually inspired because I realize that there's actually a lot of things that uh, can be done. There's a lot of technology out there that can be used to actually solve this problem. And um, it actually makes my work very meaningful and very impactful. So Mike, in your interpretation, what is sustainable financing? I think sustainable Sustainability, but the word itself is actually a very big word. Uh, it can be quite vague. Um, if you use the UN uh, guideline, uh, UN has actually 17 development, sustainable development goal, um, and, and some impact fund actually use it as a guide when it comes to investing or financing companies. Right? So the, the company has to meet certain criteria uh, that fulfill the development goal that UN have stated. Um, and then obviously there's also the ESG funds, uh, the ESG funds basically have their own set of uh, ESG metric which guide them in their investment or financing mandate. Um, but most of the ESG funds actually focus more on the public market rather than the private market itself. Um, at Trike, actually we, we think that both sustainability and ESG is still a very, very big word. Uh, it doesn't provide enough clarity. Um, therefore, that's the reason why we are very focused on uh, decarbonization itself. Why decarbonization? Because it's something that we think that is measurable and the end state is very clear. It's the, uh, resolving the climate issue itself. Right? So, so for us, we are investing in companies that have a positive impact eventually to resolve the climate issues that we are facing right now. It seems like we need to be very measurable in these approaches. Yeah. So can I find out what is Trirex's approach to investing in these projects that positively impact the world? Okay, sure. So uh, always start with the word decarbonization. And when we talk about decarbonization, basically we're talking about greenhouse gas. Um, and we're talking about three key things about greenhouse gas. We're talking about uh, avoidance, sequestration or reduction. All right. So the company that we invest in, the technology that we invest in has to actually fulfill at least one of these. All right. Uh, and if you look at greenhouse gas, basically there are five key verticals or sectors that's emitting a lot of this greenhouse gas, uh, namely the um, energy sectors, mobility transportation sectors, food and agri sectors, um, building, and last one will be industry manufacturing. So these are the five key uh, verticals uh, that's emitting a lot of greenhouse gas uh, at this current moment. Uh, what we do at Trix is that we will actually um, deep dive into each of these verticals and do a what we call a value, value chain scan, all right, uh, and try to find opportunity for us to actually invest in, all right, uh, from a from a risk reward perspective as well as from an impact perspective for to resolve the climate issue, all right. And once we've done that, we actually form a thesis around it, uh, and we use that thesis to actually go out and, and do another round of scan for companies, um, founders, technology that we think would actually match back to the thesis that we have uh, formulated. Uh, and, and obviously, we, we would regularly update the thesis because um, it's a very fluid uh, situation right now. So things have been changing, uh, the problem is changing, uh, technology has also constantly been evolving. Yeah. So that's generally the, the general approach that we take when we look at uh, the, the space itself. So on that note, uh, you mentioned that technology is constantly evolving. So besides technology, now why do you think there's an interest um, you know, in the markets in investing in climate tech and sustainability solutions? Mm, okay. From my observation, 
the inflection point uh, when it comes to sustainability investment or climate tech investment actually started towards the tail end of 2019, which actually coincide with uh, COVID. Um, so if I'm to, to guess, I think the pandemic do have an impact uh, in terms of stirring up the interest uh, in this space itself. Uh, I think the world start to realize that uh, um, the, 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 the earth that we're living in is actually uh, very fragile and the consequence of us not resolving this very critical problem uh, can be quite dire. So, um, and along with that, I think um, there's a pause uh, due to the lockdowns, etc. during the pandemic. And I think that's give everyone a chance to actually uh, take a step back and, and, and think, you know, what are the things, what's the more, what's the priority out there? Subsequently, uh, as, we, as we come out from the pandemic, you, you actually see two things happening. Uh, the first thing is basically you look, you, you see a lot of capital coming into the space, right? What is from the public space, which is the government, or the, the private space, right? There's a lot more interest coming into this space, right? Um, and that is kind of like confluence with the uh, more interest from entrepreneurs themselves, right? Um, coming into the climate tech space and trying to start companies that is trying to resolve the problem in climate tech, as opposed to the past whereby a lot of them are focused more on the social media side, uh, the fintech side, right? So I think this is a confluence of, of two things happening at the same time. But I think what really, yeah, kickstart the whole thing in end 2019 is basically the pandemic itself. Yeah, that's a very interesting point. I think um, since the end of 2019, when COVID started, we all realized the easy problems have all been solved. Mm. So now everybody wants to come and solve the real hard problems. Yeah. So on that note, how do you think global companies can lead the way in sustainable innovations? Okay. Um, this issue that we're facing, the climate issues, is a very complex issue. Uh, and actually, global company plays a very, very important role. Why I, did, why I say that is because if you look at the whole value chain, the whole supply chain, actually corporate, global corporate actually sit right on top of it, right? Um, so first and foremost, they have huge influence. What I mean by that, uh, they have influence, for example, if they are to deploy or pilot certain technology that actually will influence their peers as well as their value chain. Secondly, um, they can also, instead of their own internal technology, they can also try to deploy technology that actually uh, can be deployed along the value chain itself. All right? And because they are right on top of the value chain, they can actually uh, have so-called certain bargaining power to, to have this being uh, deployed. It's very important for innovation adoption. If new technology is not being deployed, a, a lot of times it cannot be improved. All right? uh, and uh, truth to the matter is that a lot of times companies are generally risk adverse, so they want to see data point. Then the question is that who will be the first mover, right? Who will take that first step to allow technology to be deployed, or new technology to be deployed. So I think global company has a huge role here uh, in terms of using their influence to, uh, to encourage the adoption uh, or the piloting new technology. That's one. Um, the, second, I, the second part I would, I would think from a corporate uh, global company's perspective is um, global company do have capital. All right, so uh, they have the capital to actually invest internally for their own R&D uh, to try to um, discover new technology. Uh, at the same time, uh, they can also fund technology outside of the system, right? This is also important because, um, again, truth to the matter, um, sometimes there is this not invented here mindset within the corporate itself, right? So you, you, so you do see corporates now they having the a CBC arm to do self disruption, all right. So I think that's also a very powerful way of actually uh, encouraging uh, sustainability uh, related innovation, all right. Uh, the last part I would I would say is um, the global corporates are actually a very important part of the the whole stakeholder uh, uh, community to resolve this issue itself. So you have the. The, the government, the regulator, then you have the corporates, and then you have the, the consumer. They're actually right in between, all right? So the corporates actually have a very important role when it comes to engaging uh, the other stakeholder to educate them, to actually provide feedback, all right? So that good policies can be crafted, all right? I think this whole sustainability, this whole climate issue, you need very good regulation, right? To actually uh, provide, number one, certain guidelines, certain boundary, as well as the stick and the carrot, 
uh, for everyone to actually uh, achieve the goals that we want to achieve to resolve this uh, issue that we're facing. Great. No, I think that's a very important point. And as the Alliance, um, we hope to also bring together the public and private sectors mm. to really derive meaningful outcomes. Thank you. Thanks.